Hello, and welcome to How to Make College Affordable. My name is Brian Olnick, and today we are going to go over some of the different methods we offer of how to make college more affordable. And our question is, do you have a plan? You might not yet, but hopefully by the time this presentation's over, you'll be well on your way. Now, some of the things we're going to discuss today are financial aid and scholarships. We're also going to go over some of the eligibility requirements for financial aid. We're also going to go over the payment plan, or paying in full is always an option, too. Now, you're going to have to do your own research when deciding which of these methods is best for you, but that doesn't mean you have to do it alone. We're here to help you make the most informed decision and find out what is best for you. Now, when you're applying for college, you're going to be hearing the term FAFSA a lot. Mostly, have you filled out your FAFSA? Now, the FAFSA is, stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. There, there's a reason on here that we have highlighted the free part, and that is that you do not need to pay any money in order to fill out the FAFSA. If you are ever on a website or an app that, asking, that is asking you to pay, chances are you're in the wrong place. You want to make sure that you're at the official FAFSA website or using the official my student aid app now what the fafsa is is a form saying that you're requesting assistance from the federal government to help you pay for college school expenses aid is available through grants work study funds or loans every student who meets certain eligibility requirements can get some type of federal aid regardless of age or family income now most students are eligible to receive financial aid from the federal government to help pay for college. Your age, race, and field of study won't affect your eligibility for federal student aid. Now, your income is taken into consideration, but it doesn't automatically prevent you from getting financial aid. Now, there are a few things you will need. Uh, for starters, a high school diploma or GED. You can also, if you uh, graduated from a state-approved um, homeschool setting, this will also count. You will need to be enrolled in the school and currently pursuing an eligible degree program. Let's see, You will have to be registered with the Selective Service, and if you're a male, this means you would have to register between the ages of 18 and 25. You need a valid social security number, and you must be a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. Now, how do I fill out the FAFSA, you might be asking yourself. Well, you can do this by downloading the My Student Aid mobile app, or by going to the FAFSA website at fafsa.edu.gov. Now, in order to sign your FAFSA, you will need a Federal Student Aid ID, or FSA ID. Now, if you are filling out the FAFSA at the fafsa.edu.gov website, you can create your FSA ID while filling out the FAFSA. Unfortunately, if you're using the My Student Aid app, you will have to create one ahead of time at studentaid.gov slash FSA ID. And they're both on the screen there. Now, some things to keep in mind is that um, students and parents will each need their own FSA ID, and you cannot use the same email address or phone number. However, um, one thing is once you have your FSA ID, you will need to keep a hold of that because if you ever need any information about your aid um, from the Department of Education websites, you'll need to have that ID handy. Now, what are the different types of financial aid? We offer quite a few. The first one I want to discuss is federal student loans. Now, these are loans that must be repaid with interest. Now, we offer subsidized and unsubsidized loans, and it is important to remember that you must be enrolled in a minimum of six credit hours to be eligible for a loan. We also offer grants. Now, these are this is money that you receive either from the government or from the institution you're attending. And what's important about grants is they don't need to be paid back. That is money that is given to you for your expenses. We also offer federal work study. 
these are basically jobs that you can do around campus and the money will go towards your tuition. The other one is scholarships. Now scholarships are additional funding that you can receive from various different institutions and we'll go more into that in a little bit. And then one thing is these uh, do not have to be repaid either. Now scholarships, as I mentioned before, is money that you will receive that you aren't expected to pay back and can be used to help pay for your tuition or any supplies that you might need. Now the amount of scholarships can vary differently depending on their source, so it is important to do as much research as you can. Now, the scholarships can come from a variety of different sources, and I have a little list here. Uh, schools, employers, individuals, private companies, nonprofits, or professional organizations. These uh, sources offer scholarships for a variety of reasons, and um, some of them are for students in financial e need. There's uh, students who meet certain academic requirements like GPA, um, there's some that are offered for particular majors, such as athletics, music, or art. Now, because scholarships can be uh, offered by many different sources for many different reasons, it's important that you understand each one of their requirements and their deadlines. So you should begin searching for scholarships as soon as you think you might need one. Now, one thing, we do have our website, which does consolidate quite a bit of information about scholarships, so I do encourage, um, if you're interested, to go search there. Um, it's on the screen. It's at scottsdalecc.edu slash students slash scholarships and can also be accessed from our financial aid site. There's a link on there. Now, um, it is very important with scholarships that they really do offer scholarships for just about everything. And just a quick story, when I was in high school, I actually received a scholarship from the National Tall Persons Association. Yes, I received money for college just for being over six feet tall. So even if you think there's nothing that I qualify for a scholarship, I really just encourage you to take a look anyway. And because financial aid can be complicated, we want you to know that we have, we want to put our information up on here. So if you need to contact the financial aid office, we have our phone number, the email address. I will say the email address is one of the better ways. And we have our financial aid callback form. This is relatively new, but on our website, which is at the bottom, you can go and complete a form and a representative from our financial aid office will call you back. Now, there are a lot of different factors that can influence how much aid you receive and your eligibility. So if you're, if you have any questions at any point, we really do encourage you to contact us. All right. Now we're getting into the payment plan and paying in full. Now, the, these options on our website follow relatively the same path. So we're going to kind of follow, follow along and I'll let you know where they split off. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your student center that's located at my.maricopa.edu. And you're going to want to click on the student center icon, which is in the top right of the page up there. And with this, you're going to log in with your MEID and password. And again, items you will need. Your MEID and password would be helpful for logging in. You are going to have to be currently enrolled and have tuition due. Now, when you log into your student center, you'll see on the front page there, it will say uh, it will have your balance listed. And you will also need a credit slash debit card if you're going to pay with a card, or you can also pay with a checking or savings account. And in that case, you will need the account number and the routing number for the account. Now, one thing that is important is you will have to have your pop-up blockers disabled. The reason for that is because it gets to a certain point where the window will pop open into another screen, and if you have your pop-up blockers enabled, unfortunately it will stop that process. So just this is just one thing. And because the process of disabling your pop-up blocker will vary from 
internet browser to internet browser. If you ever get confused, you can always just go, to, we recommend going to Google and just typing how to disable pop-up blockers in and then whatever internet browser you're using. And it should actually give you a list of step-by-step -step directions. Now, setting up the payment plan, and I'm actually gonna move myself up here out of the way of the pictures. Like I said earlier, uh, setting up the payment plan and paying in full are going to follow these same steps. So um, the first thing you're going to do is when you log into your student center, you'll go ahead and scroll down to the finances section. From there, you will see a box that says account summary. It is the top picture there. And underneath there will be a link that we have highlighted in yellow there that says my payment options slash manage my payment plan. When you click on that link, it will take you to a page that resembles the bottom picture. And then from here, you will go ahead and select the campus and the term that you are looking to pay for. Um, for most of you, that's going to more than likely be Scottsdale Community College and then the spring 2021 term. From Once you have found the one that you want, you will go ahead and select the select button, which we have highlighted in yellow. Now this is where it's important that you have your pop-up blocker disabled, because if you have your pop-up blocker enabled, once you hit that yellow select, that select button right there, nothing will happen. Another thing that's important is if you get to the select option and it's grayed out, it won't let you click it. One thing that you want to do is look at the pending financial aid column I'm not sure if you can see my, oh, well, it's a, uh, the pending financial aid column there. And if you have aid in there that's higher than the amount due, it actually won't let you set up a payment plan or pay. And that's because it sees that the aid is set to cover your tuition. All right. Now, once you click that select button, you're going to be redirected to Nelnet. Nelnet is the third party company that we do all of our online payments through. Now, if this is your first time doing this, and I imagine for most of you it will be, you're going to be um, sent to the account creation page. Now, this is nothing to be confused by. It's incredibly simple. You're just going to have to make an account with Nelnet, and all you need to do is set up a four-digit PIN. These can be any four numbers, just something that you will remember, and then you'll have to create two security questions. The reason this is here is because you, um, if you need to call Nelnet and ask any sort of questions about your online payment, they're going to ask for that four digit pin and the uh, security questions to verify your identity. And again, you will only have to do this the, f the first time you sign in. Let's see. Now from here, you will be sent to a page that resembles the picture on the screen. Now this is the part where if you're pay making a full payment or setting up the payment plan, your steps are going to change a little. If you notice, the gray button underneath the balance says make a payment. This is what you will click if you're just going to make a payment. And from there, you will just enter in your payment information and click select and you will be done. Now, if you're continuing with the payment plan, you will hit the set up the payment plan button, which is the green one on the bottom. From here, a notice will appear stating that your payment plan will never run longer than your class end date. This really only affects you if you have either shorter classes, uh, late start classes, because the payment plan separates your payments into monthly payments, and they won't go past the end date of your class. Let's see. And then you will also need to verify any contact information on there. All right. Let me just move myself back down. So from here, you're going to review your payment plan options and payment info. So the it will go ahead and split your, it will show you all the information. Now, when you're setting up the payment plan, you're going to have to pay a $35 down payment. $20 of that is a non-refundable fee for Nelnet, and then the other 15 will go towards your tuition. 
And once you have selected that, you will go ahead and then input your uh, payment information, whether it's the credit, debit card, or checking savings account. And it is important to remember that all payments will come out automatically from the account that you make that $35 payments with. So it's not something you have to manually go in and do every month. They will come out automatically. Now the final step is that it will go ahead and review the, your scheduled billing dates. So we'll actually show you the day that each um, payment is scheduled and the amount of each one. From there, you would agree to that. You would uh, pay the initial $35 and you're all set. After that, you will be emailed a copy of the agreement. So if you don't uh, save it on, um, don't worry about it. You are going to be emailed a copy. Um, and that will just confirm that your payment plan is set up and that the initial $35 payment has been made. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that on your student center, it's still going to show the balance due. And this is because in our system, it basically, on your student center, it just shows your remaining balance. So uh, don't. it's important not to panic. If you set up your payment plan and still see that balance due on your student center, it um, everything should still be fine. And if you have any questions, you can always just give us a call. Now, a couple important notes is that when you're setting up the payment plan, it must be set up before 6 p.m. on the due date of the classes in order to secure your places in the class. Let's see, again, it requires a $35 down payment. Uh, 20 of that is non-refundable and 15 goes towards your tuition. And the scheduled payments come out of your account automatically on the 5th of each month, unless the 5th actually falls on either a weekend or a federal holiday. So for example, if you're, if you, the 5th falls on a Sunday, then that month it would come out on the 6th instead. And one other thing real quick before I go into our closing spiel, um, the, one thing to keep in mind is that your payment plan will also automatically adjust to changes made in the classes. So if, uh, say for example, you're in a payment plan and you add classes, it will just increase your monthly payments. And also if you drop classes, it will just decrease your monthly payments. So it's not, so you won't have to worry about setting up a new payment plan each time you change your class schedule. So uh, again, I've been Brian Olnick. I work in the Student Business Services Office. Our information is up on the screen. And if you ever have any questions, I know I throw a lot of info out at you. Please just give us a call or email us. Um, and, and a lot of this information is available on our website, which is also listed at the, on the screen. I'll go ahead and leave that up for a sec. And then uh, they had a message that they wanted me to read here. Um, if you are ready to take the next steps to enroll at Scottsdale Community College, click the sign up link on this page for an SCC navigator. Your navigator will guide you through each step in the enrollment process and make sure your entry into SCC is as smooth as possible. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. All right, again, I've been Brian Olnick, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.